Hello and welcome RC Shim in the hangar. Today you see a really quick unboxing, but I'm a little worried in the box. <laughs> it's the Foxy Boxy, the Foxier box, which features the same hardware as the Legend 3 over here. A load of accessories. I like this frame style mount. A curved and a normal adhesive one. Of course you get this thing here to screw it down. You get, and that's one thing that I don't like that much, USB mini instead of USB micro cable. And servo cable, as far as I see, is only for supplying charging powers and to give life out to your video transmitter. I didn't find the volt specifications, but Foxio says it's 5 volts. As I learned from the Legend 3, this thing can be used as a TV out cam quite well. It, the latency is not that high and it works. Okay, enough theory about this thing. I will show you a lot of comparison shots now between the Legend 3 and the Foxy Boxy because I wanted to be sure that they look the same. And you also can get a feeling for the kind of quality you get. First let's take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison. 4K25 zoomed into 1080p. So that gives you a good idea of the resolution in the center region. This is 2.5K, a bit less resolution of course. And um, starting with here I will stick to 4K25 and since there's almost no difference I will stop comparing the box to the legend and will just show you some more box 4K shots both zoomed in or in full resolution. I mean not in 4K but you, you get the deal. So it's really good, good quality images you get here. Uploaded three sample files for you guys, which are not re-encoded, and you can examine them by yourselves. Check the description for the links. They've also sent me this 3D printed part, which almost like rubber. It seems very durable. It will not break easily. Inserting this cam is a tight fit, so it won't go out there unless you really force it. You always have to take it out to charge or remove SD card. I might have to cut out this top part here to access the battery and storage card. It gives a bit of, of vibration dampening this way. And you can see how easily I mounted it on this top frame plate. I just used double-sided sticky tape below to strong zip ties and it's really a, a firm connection. In case of a crash, this whole thing will bend or even break. I have good hopes that this thing protects the camera quite good. Of 
course the lens glass here is exposed and that's the main usage for these dice style cams I guess having them on copters like this these things here as I said a bit more convenient to use and to change settings because of the display they are more targeted for the planes and I really love to use it on planes the video quality seems really to be identical and I've heard this from the manufacturer but I wanted to, to test it myself exactly the same on my shots I had exposure, value uh, different between those two so setting the exposure value down to minus 07 makes the scenes a bit darker and darker scenes are better because you can increase the brightness in the post-production but if you're overexposed and the, the sky is washed out you cannot dial that down and gain back details so it's always a good idea to underexpose with the exposure radio setting on such cams. Okay so how does this differ from the run cams? Run cams are cheaper but they're only 1080p60. This thing here can go up to 4K. 4K on mini quad not, not the best idea maybe if you want to get a scenic uh, shot from above with low movement then you can use 4K. But for action flights always use high frame rates like 50 frames. So I'd like to use 2.5K with 50 frames. That gives you the potential to zoom in or to stabilize it in post-production. The wide dynamic range on the Runcam 3 looks a bit better but it also looks kind of unnatural. So I'm okay with this dynamic range here. It's not the best but it's okay. To mount it for action shots like on bikes or, or motorcycles or cars. Yeah, it's a good alternative to go to the GoPro Session 5. I just don't think that the GoPros are worth the extra money, but you have to decide this for yourselves. So let's just take a deeper look into the footage that I filmed for you and then you have to decide whether or not you like the Foxy Boxy. Foxy Boxy! Foxy 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 Boxy. Next we have the super view mode. It's a weird aspect ratio. I don't like it but some races like it because it makes you look faster in the air. So this is 1080p 50 super view.
And this is my recommended resolution, it's 2.5K50. You have the potential to zoom in, straighten it up, or stabilize it, as I will show you now. About the downsides, as I said, I don't like the low battery life of 50 minutes. Other than connecting with Wi-Fi, you don't see the status of the battery. Only a few seconds before it turns off, it will start to beep, but then it's already too late. Charging took quite a long time for me, over two hours with a good charger, with a good USB chargers. The battery is not changeable either, like it is, for example, on the Legend 3. So there are a few downsides battery related, but I think it's the same for the GoPro Session 5 and for the Runcam 3 as well. The other downside, I mean it's a minor downside, is the accessibility of the options. If you just use it on a mini quad and set exposure value, resolution and all the things just once and then keep them forever. Yeah, just forget about this downside. But if you like to experiment and always use different settings, you have to have the Wi-Fi app and turn on Wi-Fi function over here. It's not as accessible as if you have a display on the thing. That was something that I didn't like while testing. I can see most of you guys getting away with just leave it on the copter, hit record and that's it. Yeah, to, to turn it on you long press this thing here and then this button is the shutter button which starts recording. If you long press it you can enable or disable Wi-Fi. In yellow mode Wi-Fi is disabled, in red mode Wi-Fi is enabled. With Wi-Fi enabled of course the battery will be drained even faster. If you already have the Legend 3 I don't see much point in getting the Foxier box, to be honest, because image quality is the same, form factor of course is different, the accessibility here is better. So if you can create a mount for the, for the lengthy cam on a copter, which is not too hard, I, I ended up just with the foam, foam triangle part, some sticky tape and some glue and it worked. I don't see the need for the dice format on, on normal sized quads. On the smaller things, on the tower style things of course, the lengthy Legend 3 is kind of an issue. So on these smaller quads like the X Jaguar I have, the dice format is nice because it fits better there. There's one accessory uh, that you also get that I forgot, it's a T4 star key which you can use to unscrew those screws to change the glass protector in the front. Which Thanks for watching this review, hope you liked it, leave me a thumbs up. If you did, share it, please comment. If I forgot something that you wanted to ask or you wanted to know, uh, just write it in the comments and I will follow up in the comments. If you haven't, also check out my SJ7 cam review where I compared it to the Legend 3. So subscribe for a good mix on my channel with reviews and flight videos. 
So like last week I did this awesome flights with uh, fixed wing with uh, FPV 900 so yeah just give me your subscription and I won't disappoint you. Okay thanks for watching bye.